Okay, so this is something I've been meaning to add to the normal distribution playlist for ages. And it seems to be there's quite a lot of um, exam style questions that use conditional probabilities. So although this isn't covered in the textbook, I wanted to kind of mention this, as you'll notice if you go to my exam questions that are in the Bison Maths Google Drive, there's a few questions that use this. So conditional probabilities. This is not in the textbook, but given the recent chapter two on conditional probabilities and the fact that the type of question below occurred frequently in old S1 papers, it seems worthwhile to cover. And it does now cover, um, it does now come up in the new papers as well. So this one's from 2014, but let's have a look at this question. And actually this is one that I don't think is gonna need to use the normal distribution calculator, but we'll read through. It says the time X minutes taken to fly from London to another city has a normal distribution with mean mu minutes. Given that the probability that X is less than 15 less than the average is 0.35, find the probability, and here's where we've got this conditional thing because we've got this given that line, find the probability that X is greater than mu plus 15 given that X is already greater than mu minus 15. Okay, well what I'm gonna do, because we don't actually know what mu is, I'm actually gonna take this probability that we have here, and I'm gonna draw a normal distribution to help me visualize what might be going on with this. So it doesn't need to be the neatest bell curve, mine never really are. In the middle, we've got mu, and on the left, we're gonna have mu minus 15. And it says here, the probability that x is less than mu minus 15 is 0.35. So this section that we've got here is 0.35. And we now actually never need to find out what the average is. Because if you look in this next part, we're just gonna find out that mu is, uh, sorry, that the x is greater than mu plus 15. Now mu plus 15 is gonna be on this side and it's completely symmetrical, which means we know that part there is 0 0.35. And actually, although it's not very to scale with my diagram, if this is 0 0.35 and this is 0 0.35, because it has to add up to one, the middle section is 0 0.3. Now in reality, if it's 0 0.3, those lines would probably be a lot closer, but this is just to help us visualize what's happening. Now what I'm gonna do for part C of the question is I'm actually just gonna write that using the conditional probability law. Now if you need a quick reminder of that, if we say the probability of A given B, we say it's the probability of A and B occurring at the same time, or together, divided by the probability of the second part, the given thing that we've got. So what we're gonna write for this is it's going to be the probability that x is greater than mu plus 15 and the probability that x is greater than mu minus 15. Whoops, doesn't need yet like that, sorry. And we're gonna divide that by the probability of the second part, which is that x is greater than mu minus 15. Now I'm gonna do the second part, the denominator of that, I'm gonna just work out what it is. So the probability that x is greater than mu minus 15, well less than mu minus 15 is 0 0.35. So this is the section we're talking about here, which is the 0 0.3 and the 0 0.35, it is 0 0.65. Now this bit, we just need to think really carefully, what does x being greater than mu plus 15 and x being greater than mu minus 15? Well, we're saying that it needs to be both greater than mu plus 15, and it needs to be greater than mu minus 15. So the only place where that's true for both of them is this section where it's greater than mu plus 15. So though it's written as two things as like an and, the only part of x that's gonna be true for it being bigger than this and this is when it's bigger than mu plus 15 because that's obviously bigger. So we're gonna be saying the probability that x is greater than mu plus 15. Now the probability it's greater than mu plus 15 because it's symmetrical like we said earlier on, is gonna be 0 0.35. So that is 0 0.35 out of 0 0.65. What's that? 35 out of 65. If I divide the top and bottom by five, I'm gonna get 7 thirteenths for that probability. So this is the key thing. If you've got a conditional probability, just think logically, what is this thing referring to? How can I simplify that part in yellow? That part in yellow gets simplified to this part in yellow that I've just highlighted. Now, most of the questions are gonna be asked a bit more similar to this one. I think there's one in my Google Drive about like a dentist and how long it takes for people to get there to wait for appointments and there's some conditional probabilities. So go and check that one out. But this one is about the phone that needs to be charged, like the battery of a phone. It says here, the length of time, L hours, that a phone will work before it needs charging is normally distributed with a mean of 100 hours and a standard dev deviation of 15 hours. Sometimes I just find it useful to have this kind of written out. I don't know why. 
It says, first of all, find the probability that L is greater than 127. So we're trying to say, what is this kind of small probability that we've got at the end here? Now, we know that L is going to be distributed normally with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So I'm just going to work out, using my calculator, the probability that L is greater than 127. So when you go into your normal distribution, we're going to say that our lower is 127, our upper is just a big value. So you could put like a million or 10,000. Sigma is 15 and the mean is 100. So this probability is 0 0.0359. And I've done that to four decimal places. That should be enough. Now, this is the interesting part. Alice is about to go on a six hour journey. Given that it is 127 hours since Alice last charged her phone, find the probability that her phone will not need charging before her journey is completed. So she's already not charged her phone for ages. So let's see if we can um, take this sentence that we've got. Let's see if we can take it into like a given that kind of probability. Now, the reason it's gone from part A to part C is because there was a part B that's not related. So that's why it seems a bit strange that we're going straight from A to C. OK, so it says given that the phone has not been charged for 127 hours. Well, this means that we're saying given that L is already greater than 127. We know that it's already been greater than 127. And we want to find out what's the probability that it's going to last for six hours extra. Now, that's the important thing. Six hour journeys extra means that it's already lasted 127. We need it to last six hours extra which takes us to 133. So the statement we're saying is what is the probability that the phone is going to last for 133 or more hours, given that it's already lasted 127 hours? Now, I want you to think to yourself, is that probability going to be more or less than if it didn't give us the given that statement? If it just said, what's the probability that it lasts for 133 hours versus the probability of it's 133 hours, given that it's already lasted for 127? Now, intuitively, I'm hoping that you'll realise this probability is going to be bigger because of this thing. We've got this phone that has already lasted for such a long time. It's only got to last six minutes, uh, six hours extra. Whereas if it hadn't lasted for 127 hours, I think there's going to be a lower chance of going up to 133. And I'll show you that at the end. But hopefully that makes sense with some of the intuitive parts with this. So we're going to use the formula. That means it's going to be the probability that L is greater than 133 and L is greater than 127, and that's all going to be divided by the bottom part, which is the probability that L is greater than 127. Now, logically, just thinking about this part that we've got here, if I highlight that in yellow, if something needs to be longer than 133 and longer than 127, well, the only way it's going to be both of those is if it's longer than 133, because 133 is obviously further to the right in the normal distribution. So we can simplify that part in yellow to that part in yellow. And we're then just going to divide that by the probability that L is greater than 127. Now, we know the probability that L is greater than 127. It is just 0 0.0359. So I'm just going to work out the probability that it's greater than 133, just grabbing that from my calculator. And it is 0 0.0139. So if I just do that calculation now, let's put this calculator on this side. So we're going to do 0 0.0139 over 0 0.0359. We've actually got that it is 0 0.3872, which is about 39%. Okay, don't know what they wanted it to in terms of the number of decimal places, but I've kind of decided to round it to 39% there. So this actually makes sense because look how much higher it is. This is just the probability, let me just do this in blue, this is the probability that it lasts longer than 133 hours, but given that it's already lasted 127 hours, there's a much higher likelihood that it's going to last all the way to 133 hours because it's already one of these phones that have lasted all this extra amount of time to get to this right hand tail that we've got there. So don't be surprised that this is a much higher probability. It should make sense in that context. So after you've watched this video, I'd recommend going to the Google Drive, which is linked on my About section of the homepage. Go to Exam Questions by Topic, and I tell you, you're going to see lots and lots of questions using this given that kind of thing. If they use the phrase given that, you better come up with your own kind of probability that matches with it. And then you can use the formula, simplify this part in yellow, 
and then just go from there. So I did want to finish off that playlist. Um, hopefully that will be useful for you guys as you're moving ahead to your exams.